بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا the beginning of the third juz of the quran kareem the highlight of the pages or the highlight of this juz is what is known as ayatul kursi allahu la ilaha illa huwal hayyul qayyum la ta'khudhuhu sinatu wa la nawm before this we had mentioned a lot of emphasis was put on the quality of islam there is a unique gift that has been given to the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is called a deen. Inna Allah astafa lakum al-deen. A selected faith, a religion. You can call it a light in the darkness. There is supposed to be shukar on this light. It is not a burden, but it is a gift. And the demands of this gift is that whatever conditions, commands, difficulties, trials come around this gift, then man happily accepts it. That is called Islam. Total submission to the will of Almighty Allah. When a person is asked who you will submit to, then the normal answer is I will submit to the mightiest of kings. In Ayatul Kursi, Almighty Allah introduces us to the power of Allah. That there is no king like Almighty Allah. The world will see many kings, but Malikul Mulki, a king of all kings. Every other king will come, he will have his few days and he will go. Man can decide to submit in front of that, that person who does not believe in another world. But for that person who understands that besides this domain, there is another world that will come. It will be a world that will go into the millions and billions of years. It will be something which will have the meaning of never ending. In that world, Maliki Yawmiddin, in the beginning of Surah Fatiha, that Maliki Yawmiddin explained that world. That the one who will be the master, the owner, the king on that day, Almighty Allah introduces himself to the world. That if you wish to submit to someone, if really Islam has to be made to anyone, then it is to the that of Almighty Allah. Almighty Allah says, Allah, la ilaha illa hu, there is none but him. al Hayyul qayyum he is the only one that will always be living. Every other ruler, every other king. Every other boss and every other master, he will come, he will have his few days of power, he will become old, he will become weak, he will go into his grave. The all-loving uh, all Al-Hayy, Al-Qayyum, every other king and every other master that comes, forget seeing to the needs of their servants and their slaves, they cannot see to their own needs also. Almighty Allah says, Allah is that being, Al-Qayyum, not only is Almighty Allah standing on His own, independent on the, of the entire creation, but Al-Qayyum, the entire world, the entire creation is dependent on Almighty Allah. It is Almighty Allah that makes everything else stand. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم The kings and rulers of this world, they need protection. How much of protection? More money is spent on their protection. If that amount was spent on their subjects, so much of people would be smiling. Almighty Allah is that being who needs no protection. He is the protector of all. When the king goes to sleep, he has to ensure that at night an attack will not be launched. Almighty Allah is that zat la ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la nawm. There will never be sleep by Almighty Allah. There will never be tiredness by Almighty Allah. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ardi. Whatever is in the heavens, whatever is in the earth, nothing is hidden, everything is for Almighty Allah. Man dhalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idhni. He is that mighty king. Almighty Allah says, who will have that courage, who will stand up in front of Allah, and he will say, I want to intercede, I want to talk, I want to argue. Almighty Allah says, no one will have that courage illa bi'idhni. When Almighty Allah will give permission then only will someone speak, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ The kings of this world, every day they are worrying. 
of a plot to overthrow them. They do not know what's coming from behind their backs. They do not know what's in front of them. Almighty Allah is the only that who is well aware. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ What is in front? وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ What is behind? وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ As for mankind, they have absolutely no knowledge regarding the knowledge of Almighty Allah. They are unable to encompass the being of Almighty Allah, the works of Almighty Allah, the plans of Almighty Allah. Only that amount of knowledge they are given which Almighty Allah wishes. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ When you speak of a king, you speak of the domain of the king. You speak of how many square kilometers his rule is. You speak of a rule that the sun never set on the empire. Wherever the light of the sun was moving, that was under someone's kingdom. You will speak of the mighty kingdom that lasted for so long. Almighty Allah speaks about his kingdom. Almighty Allah says just the chair, kursi, the throne of Almighty Allah alone, just the chair of Almighty Allah, it is more. It encompasses the heavens and the earth. Just the chair of Almighty Allah alone encompasses the heavens and the earth. وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا Looking after the heavens and the earth has never, will never make Almighty Allah tired. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ He is the mighty Allah. Who then will submit to anyone else but this Allah? Almighty Allah then says, لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ However, no one is going to be forced into this. The choice is yours. If you wish to submit to Almighty Allah, you will find a life that will never end. Even with death, life will not come to an end. If you submit to anyone besides Almighty Allah, even while alive, man will not be living. قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ Almighty Allah says, there is no force in this. Hidayat, the truth has been made clear from batil, from that which is falsehood. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ For the one who now turns himself away from the devil and the way of the devil and he believes in Almighty Allah, he gives himself fully for Allah. فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى He has held on to a rope. He has held on to a knot that is not going to break. He has held on to something very firm. لَنْ فِصَامَ لَهَا This knot is not going to open up. وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah is the one always listening. Allah is all aware. Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu. Unique those verses where it is a matter of a master and a servant, a slave and the mighty. The stronger the king is, the further he goes from his subjects. They are all in awe of him. Never will the king come down to the level to call one of the subjects and say, Oh my friend, Allah tabarakullah is that zat. The highest and highest of kings, when Almighty Allah speaks to His servants, they just show their feeling, their desire to submit to Allah. Although they faltered more than they walked, they tumbled and they rolled more than they went forward, Almighty Allah in His kindness, Allah Tabarukala addresses His servants with unique words. In this Almighty Allah says, Allahu waliyul ladina amanu. Almighty Allah is in charge. The word wali has many meanings. One meaning is a very close friend. One meaning is the one who will see to your every need. Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu. Almighty Allah will see to the need of the believers. Almighty Allah is very close to the believers. Almighty Allah is the friend of the people of Iman. Yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila al-nur. In seeing to their needs. One is their worldly needs. That is always seen to more important than that. He will pull them out of darkness and He will show them the light. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا As for those who do not believe in Almighty Allah, who have denied Almighty Allah, kufr is the opposite of Islam. As for those who are not happy to submit, أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتِ Then their friends are the devil. Their friends are the shayateen. يُخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ If there was ever any light in their life, these shayateen will pull them out of that light and they will take them into darkness. أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Forever and ever in the fire of Jahannam. Almighty Allah thereafter mentions, makes indication to what are the reasons why a person 
decides not to submit to Almighty Allah. It is not that he is not aware of the power of Allah. Rather, there is an inner feeling what we call nafs. That nafs craves for certain power. That nafs craves for certain recognition. That nafs wants to say only what I say, what I want. That must happen. That is the opposite of Islam. Almighty Allah speaks about the first jabbar that the world had seen. The first zalim by the name of Namrud. In the era of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Alam tara ila alladhi haajja Ibrahim fi rabbihi. Almighty Allah says, ponder over the incident. An atahu Allahu al-mulk. Just on account of us giving Namrud kingdom. Because he got kingdom, now he felt there was no need for him to submit to anyone superior to him. When man has power, he forgets there is someone more powerful on top of him. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a sahabi radiallahu anh hitting his slave. From behind he said, remember what power you have on that slave. Almighty Allah got more power than you. Words of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam penetrated the hearts. There and there the sahabi would say he is free for the pleasure of Allah. When power comes, it does not demand, it is not the demand of power, but unfortunately it happens. It is not the demand of power, but it happens that when man gets power, he starts thinking that there is no one more powerful than him. If someone shows him the right, his pride will not allow him to accept it. If someone has to take out and point out his fault, his pride will not allow him. Almighty Allah says, remember there was a man called Namrud. An atahu Allahu al-mulk. Just because we had given him kingdom, he now felt it that he had the feel, he had the right, he had the haq. Hajja Ibrahim that he could argue with Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam regarding Almighty Allah. Are they amongst our people those rich and influential? That the day something goes wrong in their life, the day they do something which is against the demands of the Sharia, perhaps they were the very individual who put up the masjid. Perhaps he is the very individual that pays the salary of the imma. Perhaps he is the one that he is sponsoring so many, so many scholars. But the day is something he does wrong. And his error is pointed out to him. A simple, a poor, someone who is not on his high standing comes in front of him and explains to him that you cannot do this. All that that person is saying to him is, Allah has not allowed you to do this. But in that pride, when he starts arguing, he also becomes like a namrud. Hajja Ibrahim fi Rabbi an atahu Allahu al-mulk. Just on account of his power, he now feels he has the right to argue, to argue regarding the deen of Allah, to argue regarding the meaning of Quran. Wealth does not mean man has knowledge. Wealth does not mean man has the right to say what he thinks of Quran to be the truth. The first thing that prevents this Islam, it was not a demand of it, but unfortunately it happens. When power comes into an individual, then the ability to submit gets less and less. Almighty Allah makes indication to Namrud that it should not be like this. Because what was the end of Namrud in the ending? The mighty king, wherever his eye fell, he took over. The mightiest of mighty, but when Almighty Allah wanted to destroy him, the books of Tafsir and Tariq show it was one simple small mosquito. One mosquito brought the, the end of that mightiest of mightiest of Jabbarin, of the oppressors that the world had ever seen. One mosquito was more than sufficient. In the court of Almighty Allah, there is no such thing called power for anyone else but Allah. A second reason why a person does not submit we call it today an inferiority complex. That you look around you, man craves to have a party that is powerful. One is when man gets power, that is he cannot submit after. The second is when man finds himself in an environment that his jamaat, his party is not powerful. He finds power at somebody else's tent. He finds power in the hand of the people of Kufar. He finds power in the people around him. Now he feels shy of his Islam. He was born to submit to Almighty Allah, to submit in his talk, to submit in his walk, to submit in his clothing. But when he sees the people around him, they are a much more stronger nation. They are now going to mock at him. They are going to laugh at him. 
Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke of this when he said, Bada ad-deen gharibah, that Islam, this deen began in a manner that it was strange. And then he said, وَسَيَعُودُ kama بَدَأَ A time will come again in the world where it will be regarded as strange. Our zamana, our era is, we are the strangers. Allah's Nabi وسلم, said to us, do not feel shy. He said, فَتُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَى Be proud and happy to be a stranger of the era. When my man finds that power is not in his jamaat, then he feels shy about his Islam. Now he decides to dress like the other, to talk like the other, to imitate the other, to behave like the other. He becomes shy of his own light that he has. Almighty Allah in the next verse indicates that there is no need for this inferiority complex. In this game, there is a game like Allah's Nabi also mentioned. It will be a bucket going down the well. Sometimes the world of kufr will get ghalba over the people of Iman and Islam in worldly power. Sometimes they will have their small rule. Sometimes it's the khilafat that will be high in the world. We found ourselves in a small era, in a small hundred year, in a small century, where the khilafat was destroyed just before us coming into this world. We grew up without a khilafat above our head. We did not see the armies of Islam like how once upon a time Tariq saw them. We did not see the mighty Ottoman Empire going through the worlds and bringing everything down on their knees. We did not see the time of the Khulafai Rashidin. We can read it in the books of Tariq, but we never experienced it. The might of Islam was not in front of us. So when we grew up, unfortunately it happened a certain feeling of weakness, inferior to the people around us, shy of the powers that are around and above us, that was created within us. Almighty Allah in this verse indicates that if you find yourself in an era where deen, where Islam, where the ruling power is not the believers, but it has been given to someone else, even in that state, it must not affect the Islam of the individual. A sahabi radiallahu said it so beautifully, he was taken to be executed. As he was going, he said, the sentence was said for all the people of Islam. He said, وَلَسْتُ أُبَالِي حِينَ أُقْتَلُ مُسْلِمًا فِي أَيِّ جَنْبٍ كَانَ لِلَّهِ مصرعي. He says, as long as I know that I am going to be killed as a Muslim, with the quality of Islam, if my death is going to come, it makes no difference to me whether I fall on the right hand side or I fall on the left hand side. Whether we found ourselves in the era of the ghalba of Islam, the domain and the power of Islam, or whether we found ourselves in the era when kufar according to worldly standards was ghalib, was dominant over the Muslim lands. My Islam must not be affected. Almighty Allah says, Will you not ponder over that individual? Marra ala qariya. He passed by a village. Wahiya khawiyatun ala urushiha. It had been destroyed. It was brought down to its roof. Qala anna yuhyi. Hadihi allahu ba'da mawtiha. He looked at it in astonishment. And he said, How will Allah ever give life back to this? Sometimes when me and you think of the Muslim state, we wonder, will there ever be that time when the rise of Islam again will come? That thought that comes into our mind at that time weakens our Islam. That should never happen. فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ مِئَةَ عَامٍ ثُمَّ بَعَثَ Almighty Allah ordered the death of this individual. For 100 years he remained in his spot. There was no life in his body. ثُمَّ بَعَثَ then Almighty Allah made him stand again. Qala kam labith. He was asked, How long were you like this? He said, Perhaps one day or half a day, a part of a day. He was said, No. It was said to him, No. Bal labith tamiyata amin. You have been like this for 100 years. Look around you. He looked towards his food. He looked towards his drink. He found that no change had taken over that. But then he looked towards his donkey and he found it was bones. It had decomposed years and years. Almighty Allah said to him, We will make you as a sign for mankind. It was a sign in many aspects. It was a sign in the aspect of how Qiyamah will take place. Look at the bones of the donkey. How we will gather it. 
how we will now cover it with meat falamma tabayyana la when he saw all of that happening in front of him that expression he gave was a lesson to mankind he said a'lamu anna allah ala kulli shay'in qadir i understand very well that my allah has power over everything in this verse there was an indication one to the unique qudrat of allah there was an indication to how qiyamah will take place the indication for me and you who find ourselves in an era that we feel down we feel dejected we hear about muslims being trampled in the world we understand the forces of kufr no one can say anything to them almighty allah in this verse gave an indication mufassirin speak about this verse they explain it was a nabi of allah who passed by masjid al aqsa after the mighty king zalim oppressor bukht e nasr had destroyed al aqsa it was flat to the ground there was no tara copy left there was no scholar of the deen left as he went past he asked this question will life ever come back to this land life here meant religion deen will deen ever come back almighty allah showed him his qudrat that it only needs 100 years and deen will come back unique is the tarikh of masjid al aqsa mufassirin write within 70 years after the fall of al aqsa in the era of bukht e nasr almighty allah made the revolution start people began retracing their steps and coming back to the land they built up a small masjid of their own they began teaching again when the nabi was brought back to life on the top of the 100th year and he looked around him he saw al aqsa was alive again nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about the word 100 years he spoke about how on in every 100 year almighty allah will create a revolution allah almighty allah will bring a mujaddid for his deen the islam has come to stay there will be times when it will go down but in that tarikh of al aqsa in the time of bukht e nasr it did not stay down for more than 100 years when the crusades took over al aqsa it did not stay in their hands for more than 100 years we have hope now also that masjid al aqsa which was taken away from the muslim ummah it will not stay in the hands of the kufar regime for more than 100 years before that we are going to see inshallah a revolution similarly when the khilafa fell no one ever thought that khilafa can be revived the ottoman khilafa most likely the date was 1924 we are on the brink of 100 years many things unique things are happening in the world in the islamic world we are now seeing powers which we had never seen before who knows how much time is left but we have great hope in almighty allah that our very eyes that saw the muslims reach the lowest of lowers of levels in power with these very eyes almighty allah will make us happy that we will be able to see the flags of islam going higher and higher no matter which condition however we are whether we are in the times when islam is the maghloob islam is dominated or when it's the time when islam is the dominant religion whether islam is ghalib whether islam according to worldly aspects is maghloob for me and you it must make no difference we have been sent in this world as a muslim to submit to the will of allah walastu ubali hina uqtalu muslima our phrase must be it makes no difference to my life as long as i know i am dying as a muslim whether my death comes on the side of a or it comes on the side of b whether my death comes when i'm a victor or whether it comes when i'm a martyr i must die i must live and i must die with the quality of islam one reason for not submitting was mulk power almighty allah indicated towards namrud it did not help him one but one is because we feel inferior we feel shy we feel scared of the powers around us almighty allah's indication in these verses that you will see up and down in this world and if you are in a time when it's down then remember it is just within a hundred years and again you will see it up it's not worth it to lose your islam just because you don't see the power around you a third reason for not submitting is what is called the mind cannot understand we are living in an era of science science asks everything to be proven with the many pictures that they show on the internet they have taken over the world of what is called education the world which is called experimenting the world which is called what day to day call science what we would call learning about the world around us 
They took over it in such a manner that whether they speak lies or they speak the truth, that is something that no person will be able to work out. In ja'akum fasikum bi naba'in fatabayyanu. Almighty Allah has warned that when a fasik will bring you knowledge, then think well about it before you accept it. Today in the name of science, they have not said to us that the very people who are in charge of science are the very shaitani lobbies who we see hitting against the Muslim world. That they will not say, but they are in charge of science. The very people in charge of science are the people in charge of the media. If they want to portray something, even if it's a lie, the entire world of the media with one voice, with pictures, with numbers, will say the same thing so many times that unfortunately the people of Iman finally will also start believing it. The world of science together with the media is able to lie a lot also. And what these lies that they have created in the universities, in the schools, through the internet, sometimes they create doubts in the mind of a believer. They create doubts regarding verses of the Quran where they show it does not conform to what science is saying. The answer of a person of Islam and Iman is what my Allah has said is the truth. And what your science is saying, it's a theory. It is perhaps also not even the truth. There is a theory of Darwinism. Millions and millions are spent to prove it. Not because those people who want to prove it really believe it. They themselves know it is not true. How many professors admitted at the end of their life that from the very beginning they did not accept this theory, but they were told, they were warned, if they dare speak about it, they will lose everything. They will be mocked on the international scale. They loved through a lie, they loved with a lie. If Darwinism could be one lie, the world how it is, how science has shown the universe, there could be lies in each and every aspect. The demand of a person is of Iman and Islam is, how Almighty Allah has mentioned, when a fasik will bring you news, and if you cannot yourself work out, is it true or false, do not just accept a picture. Do not just accept something you see on the television or internet. Do not just accept a number that is shown to you. And loudly everyone is saying, in this world, everyone saying the same thing does not mean anything anymore. The entire media works for the very same lobby that science is also ruled by. Almighty Allah in the next verse explains that the people of Iman, the people of Islam, even if their aql cannot understand something, their Iman in Almighty Allah will be that if my Allah said it's going to happen, it is going to happen. There will be always in the heart that how, there is no problem with that how, but because of that how, it must not cause any deficiency in our Iman and Islam. What a unique example is going to be given. What better example? The example of Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was the Imam of Islam. How he submitted to Almighty Allah. He also had a how in his heart. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى Almighty Allah says, remember, when Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asked, Oh Allah, show me, how will you give life one day to the dead? This is also something the aql cannot accept. The world of the grave is something science will never believe. But the person of Iman and Islam, he says to science, this is not your field. The word of my Allah is beyond your understanding. Your machines do not work here. And if science has to show something which is contrary to the teachings of Quran, then we will say to the scientists, either you are in open deception or your master and you, both of you all are lying. You all are lying through your teeth, but just because you have certain gadgets in front, that will not put me in deception. I believe in my Allah. I believe in what my Allah said. I do not believe in pictures, because pictures can be made up. A picture of the sun which is so mighty and far can be made up. A picture of how the galaxy is moving and operating can be made up. How my Allah described things is how my Iman is. And what science has said, it is something which I will ponder. It is something which I will consider. It is never ever something I will grab. Almighty Allah speaks about Ibrahim alayhi salam. He also had a how. How will Allah give life to the dead? Me and you also have this how. We stand by the grave. We wonder how the person in the grave is alive. 
he is being questioned, he is in a good condition, he is in a bad condition. This how will always be with the people of Iman and Islam, but this how never ever creates weakness in the Islam of the individual. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked, how? Almighty Allah asked, O walam tu'min, O ma Ibrahim, do you not believe? Ibrahim alayhi salam said, bala, O Allah, definitely I believe. But just to get a inner feeling, a happiness of the heart, Allah tabarakullah said, qala fakhuz arba'atan min al-tayr. Ibrahim alayhi salam was told, take four birds, fasurhunna ilayka, and now make them inclined towards you, make them your pets, become close to them, thumma ja'al ala kulli jabalim min hunna juz'a, then he had to slaughter all four, he had to take bits and pieces of each one, he had to separate it, on different mountains he would put a different piece, thumma ad'uhunna, then he was told to look at the four mountains, on one mountain was part of a wing, on another mountain was a leg, on one part was a beak, Allah tabarakullah said, call, ya'atinaka sa'ya, and you will see them in a second, they will all gather together, what is theirs will come towards them, no one's beak will go to the other bird, in front of the eye of Ibrahim alayhi salam, four birds were created, from the different mountains its pieces joined, and he saw them running towards him, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Almighty Allah says, remember, Allah has power over everything. If the reason of not submitting to Almighty Allah is because we can't understand it, then remember Ibrahim alayhi salam also could not understand. But not understanding was never a reason for not submitting to Almighty Allah. There will be a day where the whole world will be made to understand. But on that day, everyone will not be given the chance to submit. This is the world for submitting. That will be the day for understanding. In the surah, Almighty Allah now brings it to an end. One is the issue of interest will be discussed in detail. Because as Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about, at the end of times, one of the biggest fitan, one of the biggest trials for the world will be the issue of interest. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about riba which will enter into the houses, into the wallets, into the pockets of the entire world. Allah's Nabi spoke that if the fire, meaning if the riba itself does not afflict an individual, but the smoke of that riba, that will go everywhere. When the international bank was created, no one ever thought like how today we are going through what we call this coronavirus. What's going to happen in the next two, three years? How the world will change is something you can never imagine. Once upon a time, when the international bank was being spoken about in the media, no one ever imagined what we see today. No one ever thought of a time where there will be no gold in the hands of an individual. There will be no silver in the hands of an individual. His own money, happily he will take it and give it away for nothing. It was not possible for the mind to ever conceive such a picture. But when the world changed, how it changed, in these verses, Almighty Allah speaks of the issue of riba. No matter how attractive it may seem, how a person will be inclined towards it, how a person will feel that my business will be secure if I have to have it. This interest is a very unique thing. In the eyes of Almighty Allah, interest is war with Almighty Allah. Interest is war with Almighty Allah. Unique, the last verse Mufassirin mentioned, the last verse of Quran that was revealed had to do with the issue of a warning against interest. This warning now comes in this verse. It starts with, الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ riba. Almighty Allah says, this is what Islam means, to submit to the will of Allah. In Medina, Munawwara, Makkah, Mukarrama, interest was rife. Rasulullah sallallahu one command, he says, today I bring an end to the door, to the time of interest. One sentence of his, and interest fell to the ground. Allah Tabarakullah saved the wealth of believers. M- majority of the wars of today are being fought. Majority of the harm, the zulm, the cruelty, the oppression that is taking place in the world today is on account of this name, riba, interest. Allah Tabarakullah says, الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ riba. Remember the one who takes interest. لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي يتخبته الشيطان من المس. When he will stand in front of Allah, Almighty Allah, he will stand like the man who has been afflicted by some jinn. 
He will not be able to stand right. He will not be able to answer right. He will not know what to say. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا الْبَيْعُ مِثْلُ الْرِبَى Almighty Allah says, how did they say, how could they feel that business and interest is the same thing? أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ الْرِبَى Interest is different. Had interest and business be the same, Almighty Allah says, Allah is the one that made business halal for you. He put barakah and blessings in it and He made riba haram. فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَوْعِذَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ Listen to this verse of Quran. Make toba from the interest in our lives. Almighty Allah says, The one who an advice, admonition has reached him from his Allah. فَانْتَهَى He pulls away immediately. He says, I want nothing to do with the interest. فَلَهُ مَا سَلَفْ the, in, the capital that he has put in, the capital is his. وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ And his matter will now be by Almighty Allah. Meaning Allah will forgive. وَمَنْ عَادَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ But if the individual goes back to his interest, Almighty Allah says, This is the man of the fire. هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Forever and ever he will be in the fire. يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى Almighty Allah has taken it upon himself to destroy the nature of interest, to destroy the barakah of the well that comes because of interest. How many empires we saw coming tumbling to the ground? How many families who once upon a time were so wealthy and a few years down the line everything was finished? Drugs entered into that family. Murder entered into that family. Hatred and corruption entered into the family. Either because it was wealth which was taken from the, inter- from the inheritance of somebody else or it was wealth which was earned through interest. Allah Tabarukullah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu O people of Iman, اتقوا الله fear your Allah وذروا ما بقي من الربا if there is any interest left in your life leave it no matter how much it is no matter how much you have accumulated no matter how many houses you think you can now purchase with that وذروا ما بقي من الربا what interest has come to you leave it إن كنتم مؤمنين if you have iman فإن لم تفعلوا if you are not ready to do so فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Then be warned of a war from the side of Allah and the Nabi of Allah. وَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ لَا تَظْلِمُونَ وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ Almighty Allah then who gives that final which we mentioned, the last verse of Quran to be revealed was regarding to a warning regarding interest. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Fear that day when you will be brought back to your Allah, ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ On that day, every individual will be given what he has earned. وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ Oppression will not be made on anyone. If on that day man comes to Allah with blood money on his hands, blood money means the money of riba, the money of interest, which will be giving out blood, haram and dirty and filthy, on that day, how does he expect to stand in front of Almighty Allah except like a man who was inflicted by some jinn? He will have no answer. His legs will not be stable. He will wobble front and back. He will go falling and tumbling into the fire of Jahannam. Allah Tabarukullah save us all. The last page of Surah Al-Baqarah, it started with Islam. It started with the demand to submit totally to the command of Almighty Allah. In the last page, again this is brought to the fore. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبُكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ A verse was revealed. Rasulullah sallallahu read it to Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The meaning of the verse is what you have within your hearts. Whether you hide it, conceal it, or whether you make it apparent, Almighty Allah will take you to task for it. فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ who he wishes he will forgive, who he wishes he will punish. Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah got power over everything. This verse was very hard on Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said, O oh Allah's Nabi, what we make apparent, what we do out of our actions, with our limbs, with our tongue, that is in our control. But then there are those things which are not in our control. It is our thoughts, it is inside feelings. We have no control over that. Yet Almighty Allah is going to take us to task for it.
he came with this, that how will we manage against this? The meaning of the verse from the beginning was not this. The meaning of the verse was, whether you have an azam, when you have a firm determination to carry out an evil act, then even if you don't manage to carry it out, because something becomes a barrier, from your own side you wanted to do it, so whether you made it apparent, whether you made it, you kept it hidden, whether there was kufr which you hid from the world, you were a hypocrite, or whether you exposed your kufr, Almighty Allah knows it all. That was the meaning of this verse. It did not have to do with thoughts, because thoughts are from the blows of shaitan. There was going to never be man taken to task for thoughts. But because the apparent of the verse brought that thought to Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they understood the meaning to be that whatever thought is in you, Allah will take you to task. Worrying of that day, they came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they said, O oh Allah's Nabi, we are able to control what is out, but what is within us, we have no control. Look at the lesson of Islam that was given. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed them how upset he was. And he explained to them that this is not the manner you deal with Almighty Allah. Rather, when Almighty Allah says something, when Almighty Allah commands with something, even if you feel it's beyond your power, do not come and say, how can I do this? That is not Islam. Rather, you must say, Amantu Billah. Whatever my Allah has ordered, I believe in it. And then you will say, Oh Allah, forgive me if I am unable to live up to the demands of this. This is the unique lesson of the meaning of Islam. My mind cannot understand certain rulings, but I believe it is from my Allah. There are certain actions which I find myself unable to do it, but I believe in it because it is from Allah. Sahaba radiallahu anh took, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, say, I believe, their tongue started rolling with this, Allah tabarak ta'ala in happiness revealed, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ The Nabi of Allah really has iman on what has been revealed upon him from Allah. And the people of Iman, the believers also got Iman. Kullun amana billah. All of them have believed in Allah. This is that Islam. They believed in Allah, the angels of Allah, the books of Allah, the messengers of Allah. La nufarriqu bayna ahadim min rusuli. Every Nabi of Allah. They said, Sami'na wa ata'na. Oh Allah, we heard. Once we heard, it's your command. Even if our inside told us, but how? Our outside would say, we heard, وَأَطَعْنَا, we obey, وَفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا, O oh Allah, we will try, if it is difficult for us, O oh Allah, will you forgive us, وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ, and how can we object, object against you, O oh Allah, what else is there for us but Islam, because one day we are all coming back towards you. Almighty Allah thereafter mentioned the real meaning of this verse, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. What is not within the reach of an individual? Where will is Allah ever make him? Where will is Allah ever make it obligatory on him to fulfill something that he is unable to do? But the lesson of Islam was given in these verses that even when they did not understand the meaning, that question that they made to Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they made toba from asking such a question. Their tongues became habitual with this. Sami'na wa ata'na wufranaka rabbana. We have heard, we have obeyed. Oh Allah, forgive us. We are all going to return to you. The last verses of the Surah Al-Baqarah, when Islam will come into an individual, then his words will be, Wa'afu anna, waghfir lana, warhamna. Oh Allah, forgive us. Oh Allah, have mercy on us. Oh Allah, pardon us. Anta Mawlana, O oh Allah, you are the one who is closest to us. You are the one who is in charge of us. You are our only helper. Fansurna ala al kafirin. When Islam will come into an individual, then he will understand that help against the world of kufr around him comes only from Almighty Allah. His eyes will always be on Almighty Allah. He will have no fear for the world of kufr around him, whether he lives in a time where Islam is dominant over all others, or in a time where the Muslim Ummah is weaker and Kufar is found as a dominant faith or dominant power according to worldly aspect, whatever it is, whatever condition, his eye, the
the eye of a person who has submitted to the mightiest of mightiest of kings, his eye will always be on that king. فَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Islam will never leave him. He will never leave Islam. May Almighty Allah in the barakah of Surah Al-Baqarah bless us all with Islam. Making shukar for the deen that Allah Taala gave us. The demand of it is to submit. Submission is called Islam. Almighty Allah in His kindness gave us the name. Gave us the certificate even before the exam. He already called us Muslim. May Almighty Allah allow us all to live up to this name. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين